fuel riders today. I'm going to try and see how much pressure these compressors can top up this tank to. Got about 100 psi in there, so I'll go ahead and I'll plug them in. See how much we can get. Let's be able to do this off camera. Drawing up head pressure. Tap valves open. And they're both teed in. And they're both put out in there simultaneously. There you go, block them off. And they get all quiet. That hose leaks. Yeah, it takes ages too. Compressors aren't big enough. It's still about 300 psi, but it takes nearly three hours because these are so damn slow. Yeah, they have Tecumseh made in Australia. Both old um, uh, 12 compressors. 1.3 full load amps. So, yeah, they're basically Kirby compressors. This one is out of an older model fridge, been out in the weather. This one is out of a fridge that was in the shed all its life. Both those fridges had leaks, so, so it's just scrapping the fridges, and not, and not kept these, I just kept these, and just used the fridges as um, storage. So yeah, that's the original ba base plate, and I'm just using an old sign as a base plate for this one. Bits of uh, stock shit going in there. This needs to go good suction. So yeah, that just stops crap going in there. This has got better suction than that one there though. Suction's heat strong on this one. This one here is not as strong. So yeah, this has been used, I've used this one here flat out for air. They've only just started using this one. This one here is all topped up. It's about 180 psi in there. All done from this compressor, which gets too hot too quickly, so this is only good for small things like a bright pump or something like that. Oh, there's a little lily. That one there's got a pipe battling inside, it's been doing it all its life, so hasn't done the damage so far. Yeah, you gotta put pressure on it, it's alright. Yeah. Oh well. Actually, two Kirby compressors on the sides. Oh, look at that. There's a nameplate on them. E1071. This one is an E106. So, this must be an older model than this one. Yeah, I'd say so. Got about 150 in there so far. Bubbles are in the way. Yep, 150 psi and a drop. No fluctuations. Yeah, it's accurate. So, yeah. Let it put a pressure for a bit and we'll show you. Okay, Bill, it's about 15 minutes later. It's about 280 psi. So that's pretty good. Just an old expired oxygen tank. Alloy, that scuba tank. Same stuff that I make the scuba tanks out of. <sighs> the, oh, cat out on me. The um, tank it's rated to, I think it's nearly 3000 psi, if not more. So. That sort of pressure, this tank wouldn't feel it. It's a high pressure rated tank, so yeah. This I'm going to set up permanently. I've got a little set up with a JMET connector. Hose just goes on there, out there, pump tires up on various trailers and farm stuff. Shut the compressors off. Should have some sort of cut off in here though, to cut the back pressure off. I haven't found the way to do that yet. I've got a tap here to shut this off and shuts the gauge off. So yeah, still trialing it out. It's been alright so far. Just gonna find some sort of cutoff for these, so when these get to that pressure, 
We've only got to find a gauge that's capable of, that, of getting up to that pressure. Maximum we get is 175, but anyway, that'd be enough for this. Get a spare one of them, I'll rig it up somewhere. I think I have actually. I have got a spare one of those um, air cutoff gauge uh, switches. Just got to find out a rig two of these up for it. And yeah, hook it up in line here somewhere. Find out how to put it in line. And yeah, have it as a proper air compressor. But yeah, I want to get some bigger compressors though. They're only for small things. They've taken too long to fill this up. Too small for the job. So yeah, old air conditioner ones or old big curvy Kelvin at a window shaker air compressors would be good for this. But yeah, get a proper air compressor one day for this tank. So here. Yeah. Does a job so far. And this and there, yeah. I'll get a proper um like a proper air compressor pump unit somewhere. Set up a motor with it and just use this as a normal everyday air compressor. Well this is a tank for it anyway. Another expired gas bottle. Got a fitting from a hot water service. Some hot water services like I think Bramers and Reams or something like that, they have these fittings permanently um Look, uh, lock trotted onto the tanks so when you find them scrapped you find these fittings are still half left on them. You get that, that fits to this gas bottle pretty good. It happens to be slightly tapered so I put some lock tight in there, screw it up tight, got another crappy fitting, screw that inside this which can adapt the valve, a ball valve in this case which is a crappy old one. Another old brass fitting and I got a half inch adapter. So yeah I could put another adapter on that for a hose. So yeah Another, another tank I could use. So yeah, it's just um, condensate's the only problem. I have to tip these tanks upside down, then flush them to get the condensate out. So yeah, that's the only drawback with them. And here's this compressor. I did this quite a while ago. When I first started um, learning how to weld. I cut this open. We got given an old um, Mally's chest freezer. I think it's a 300 litre one. And it wasn't working. The lights had come on, but the compressor wouldn't work at all. So we found and did some tests. No, nothing between there or your, I think that's your um, common run and start. So yeah, these are both completely dead. So yeah, I took the motor out of it and took all the, all the part. I just smacked it up and snapped the crank off to get the piston out. But yeah, what happened is, um, it had been installed or turned that flat out and this is air flow on the side of the freezer was blocked or restricted. Like a presser ran too hard, it worked, the freezer was get, uh, just chewing power. Turned that flat out and worked the compressor too hard and yeah. Ended up taking the start winding out, then the run winding. So yeah, the compressor was failed completely. This is all a nitrogen charge model, it's the same compressor as those two. So yeah. When I first started learning how to weld, I just welded this back together, just to practice on. So yeah, learn how to tap some threads and did all sorts of shit with it. So cool. So I practiced on it. So yeah, I just smacked it up with a hammer, took the pump out, just snapped the um, crank off to get the pistons out. There's our um, refrigerant chambers. That's your suction. It goes in that first chamber, then builds up on this one, then goes into this little um manifold here. Hang on, that's right. So this is your discharge manifold which goes on um yeah pumps through goes through this hole yeah goes into here and that's just back there. This is your primary chamber that's permanently blocked off. I smacked the lids off with a hammer so I can see what's inside. They were permanently blocked off so that's your inlet and that was permanently blocked off and this is your discharge chamber. Which goes to that manifold, which is directly mounted to an outlet here, which I just snapped off. So yeah, I've used this thing to practice things on. I've snapped the um, oil cooler ring off. It just goes around, it loops back, and comes out. So yeah, it's a little piston. I lost one of the bolts getting that off. Basically, I think what they what in the factory these are actually heated because you're never going to get that back in. They must heat the block up, put the piston in then assemble it. So once the piston's in, that's it, it's in. You're never ever, ever going to get it out. So what happens with the oil pump here, just stuck at the device and twisted it and they come out. 
you see a little strip in there as it spins, it's like a corkscrew. It screws up and it all just makes it shoot its way up. Up the crank, through here, make it way that the piston um, the bearing, which is just no bearing at all, it's just bolted directly to that. Pressurizes that up, and the excess comes out the top hole, flicks around the, around the housing, and yeah, but it just covers itself with oil. So yeah, and it also goes up here, up the con rod, pressurizes and comes out, up to the gudgeon pin, out this hole. It just constantly fills this little ridge here completely with oil to keep the piston lubricated in that cylinder. So it's a pretty smart idea how they made this. And I think either that's half made its way out during operation or that's just a too long pin. That roll pin must be too long because I can't get that back in so yeah. I don't think that would have come made its way out. But yeah, it's pretty interesting how this thing works. You see that hollow con rod and the oil goes in there, pressurizes in the gudgeon pin comes out the hole on the other side of the gudgeon pin, out that hole and just fills up. And whatever excess pressure is inside here comes out the back out this hole. And that's another one on the other side. And that's just some um, little ridge there where the valve plate um, sits in. And that goes up there to support the the crank. Yeah, well it actually goes this way. Yeah. Which goes on there. With our valve. That's the um, suction. The piston very lightly rests on that. The gaskets are wrecked. There's one gasket still remaining. And this is the outlet valve. Just a bit of spring steel that pops out of there. And yeah, and these little bits of pins that hold the valve in. Which go under those holes there and lock it in. So yeah. Torque settings of how to bolt this together like an engine. It's all torqued up to a certain specification. And there's these plugs I smashed here. And bolts that held the head on. Uh, I think they held the motor on actually. So yeah, I've actually took this apart. And there's a pretty interesting stuff here. And that's the head suction discharge through there. It's a piece of aluminium. The rest is all solid cast iron. So yeah, that's a discharge line, as you see. So yeah, got a mess of it, made a mess of it pulling it apart. Let something in the long run. And this one is off a freezer. The freezer models, these are commonly sealed off. This is the um, charging um, valve. I must stick a little thing in there, charge it and do it up. Then that seal is heat, heat shrink over it. I've noticed when these, these model compressors and freezers only had this. These fridge ones don't have that, so they're not sealed. But these, these freezer ones are. So yeah, that's what's inside it. Now I'll show you the motor. Okay, the oil as well, as you can see, I've scrapped it already. I've took it, taken all the copper out, and this is what I use uh, where I scrap my electronics. Microwave and transformer windings. I put all the copper in here, sort all this stuff out, and grade it, and yeah, collect it up, and when it's worth money, I take it in. This is the motor, the stator bolted on at the pump unit through those four holes, those bolts I just showed you. There's a specification or manufacturing number, whatever that's supposed to be. Piece of plastic and the windings are in there. There's that rope that holds the windings in. But yeah, there's some um, start winding, the thicker one. There's a slightly thinner one here, which is the run winding. It suffered a pretty catastrophic burnout. Literally melted all these in one spot and burnt the rope out and the oil was all black and everything. The gas wasn't even in the freezer. When I took the compressor out, there was no gas left in it. So, I don't know, it's run out of gas and just kept working and working and working or, yeah. Either way, that's what happens in your compressor if your fridge is um, working too hard. I'll do another video and show you how, to, um, how far away from a wall or from ventilation a fridge should be installed and what thermostat settings should be on to avoid this happening. So yeah, thanks for watching.